What's going on everybody? It's Wilson here from the Cardinal Pilot. Today I've got Jason from Premier Aviation HD. He's in the right seat here. He comes up here quite a bit with me. We go up to Pogue just to get some gas. It's about a dollar ten cents cheaper and it's only about a 12 mile flight. So it's a good excuse just to go up and have a good time, go fly, maybe get a, a drink or something up here at Pogue. But today we're going to be departing runway 35's uncontrolled field. We're going to climb up through pattern altitude and depart the area in the downwind and keep climbing up to 2,000 feet and call it Tulsa Approach. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. It's going to be a real quick video on what I think is the correct way to do a crosswind landing. The winds back at Riverside are pretty interesting. They've got two parallel runways. They're almost always the actives, but today with the winds, they're going to be using runway 31. And 3-1 is interesting for two different reasons. You've got a big, huge like, campus on the left side. And then on the right side, you've got several rows of hangars that are parallel, or actually perpendicular, with the runway we're using. So a lot of weird winds hit those two buildings, those objects, and come and hit the, uh, the runway. So you really got to fly the airplane until you can't fly it anymore. And you're going to watch as we come down, we touch for a second, and then we pick back up. We touch our left gear, and we ride the left gear for about two or three seconds, and then we start counting them down as the airplane slows, two and three. And right when the third gear touches, the flaps come up to put more weight down on the tires. So guys, I'll try and make this a real quick video. I'm going to narrate it as we go along. For anyone that might be struggling with crosswind landings, hopefully this might help you. So Tulsa Approach got our radar contact and then gave us vectors down into Riverside. So there was the 180 turn to the south, then they're making us go to Sepulveda, which is a small town, and then we're going to turn left here, and we're going to go in for the midfield left downwind to runway 31 at Riverside. Right about now we're contacting the tower. The tower told us to enter the midfield left downwind for runway 31, and we're starting to make that turn now to the right to enter the pattern. Now the reason why we haven't put our gear down or made our left turn to join the base is because there's other traffic. They actually landed three airplanes in front of us, so we flew out over to the power plant. We were at beam traffic, we dropped our gear, and then we turned inbound. Right here we've joined final, we're going through our final checklist, our pre-landing checklist, our GUMPS checklist. We are clear to land on runway 31, all the traffic has exited the runway, and if you look down we have a nice view of little downtown Jeeks here. So in this situation, given that we know the wind's coming off the building on the left of the runway and the hangars on the right, we might have some variable winds, some gusty winds, different velocities. So I'm going to let this airplane fly itself all the way to the ground, keep the crab angle in, let it weather vane, and then right at about 30 feet, I'll kick it and line it up with the runway. So I'll let this one play through, we'll go one time full speed just so you can see how it goes. Let's watch that one more time. I'm going to freeze it right after we touch with both mains. So what's going to happen is I'm going to bring it down, I'm going to touch with both mains, I'm going to feel the crosswind component, I'm going to pull back and roll it to the left and touch the left. I'm going to ride the left tire for about three or four seconds. So there's the freeze. Notice both the main and nose are off the ground. The nose is going to touch next as we slowly bleed off speed. Then the right main is going to touch. Then the flaps are going to come up to put weight on the main gear so we don't go sliding. 
And what I was talking about earlier, flying the airplane until you can't fly it anymore. I kept the crosswind component in there. With the added weight on the tires and the flaps came up, the nose gear stayed right on the stripe. So thanks for watching my quick video here at the Cardinal Pilot uh, doing this crosswind landing, explaining it. So if anyone's struggling, here you go. Hopefully that helps. Also, I'm getting ready to go to Oshkosh for Premier Aviation and Mr. Aviation 101, so stay tuned for that. That's going to be awesome. See you all later.